The goal now of the next session, which you'll be doing in the lab, is to align learning objectives, strategies, and assessment by revisiting your work and by the peer review, as I explained. Uh, the next few slides we already went through, so I'll just go to the one that is about this session. Um, quick word on alignment, if you recall the synchronous classroom sessions right from the beginning. We had these three facets of teaching and learning. The learning objectives, the learning activities or strategies, and the assessment. And we had discussed a lot about how these three need to be aligned with each other, how they have to match each other for effective teaching and learning. In fact, in one of the sessions, we explored the alignment between the objectives and the assessment to a great extent. And today, we'll again be looking at this alignment a little bit more in detail. Why peer review? Why is this a good technique? Again, let's just briefly go over some of the points. Uh, peer review has a lot of benefits, known benefits, whether you are doing the review or whether you're getting the review. So if you are getting the review, you get very valuable feedback from your colleagues, from domain experts, and that really helps to improve your activities. Peer review is, in fact, a very useful strategy even for students, though we are not talking about it too much now. We might touch upon it in the group project session uh, tomorrow. If Now, you may ask, OK, if I'm getting feedback, it's great. But why is peer review useful if I'm a reviewer? And again here, by doing the peer review, what each of us can learn is to how to is get into the get more in depth into the actual activity that we are doing a review for so the peer review helps us construct good activities on our own and the way we, it happens is there's a set of checklist criteria there's a check there are rubrics and all of these help us uh, learn more about the activity itself as a community uh, peer review will help us go towards our goals. It helps build quality community resources. And I'm sure all of you are aware of, as uh, instructors and researchers, that it's a common practice in scientific research. So we'll be using peer review in the next session. And the activity starts by you finding a partner from the same domain, ideally somebody who is taught or is teaching the same course, if not somebody who's very close to your domain. There is a second constraint that the partner should have done the online assignments. So if you haven't done the online assignments, I'll tell you what to do in a few minutes. But first thing is try to find a partner from a nearby domain who's done the online assignments. Then go have tea and proceed towards the lab. And on Moodle, you need to locate your respective homeworks. You need to pull those out. And you need to pull out some worksheets which we have just uploaded. So. In the lab, you'll be working in two simultaneous phases. In the first phase, we've labeled it as a think phase because it's individual. You'll be reviewing each other's questions. So let's start with the PI assignment. You'd be reviewing the PI question of your partner according to the worksheet. It's on Moodle, and I'll just show you an example of this worksheet. If you recall the peer instruction homework, you had to write eight questions for different pedagogical goals. So those are labeled as questions A through H. And there's a series of checklist uh, uh, questions and criteria. This is, in fact, a table. I've only shown you one row of the table. And what you'd be doing in the review worksheet, those are in uh, Word, Microsoft Word format, is to write whether the question that you're reviewing does not match the objective, matches it to some extent, or matches the intended objective very well. So you'd put a one, two, or three. Uh, next to each column. In this manner, you have a few questions for the peer instruction assignment. Since the person who wrote these questions, the author, is right next to you, you can always ask them for clarifications. If you want, you can. there's enough space in the worksheet for you to be able to write comments also. So what you do now is you review the PI question of your partner, and the partner does it for you. And in the pair phase, you discuss your review and the justification with each other. So you actually discuss the review worksheet that you saw a moment ago. And finally, you can upload the peer review worksheets in response to the Moodle assignment, which has been posted. 
in this manner repeat steps 1 and 2 the individual reviewing phase and the discussion phase for four activities the review forms are really short there are three or four review questions for each activity so for the think pair share activity visualization activity and flipped classroom homework uh, you'd be repeating these steps if you have not done the assignments what you need to do is go to the lab and complete your assignment before the next session so please don't pair up with somebody unless you already have done the assignments if you haven't done the assignments this is uh, what you need to do so what we can do now is uh, uh, you may be wondering what happened to the fifth assignment there was a wiki assignment after these four that also needs to be completed we are not using the wiki assignment in this peer review session but please complete the wiki assignment and take the survey which is present at the end of the wiki assignment so the next session is really to go and close all the homeworks that you've been doing in the last 6 uh, weeks if you have any questions about how to do the peer review we can you can post it on chat or on moodle and uh, we can break for tea right now i was going to ask you for a poll on how many participants have completed it but you can just post this on the chat uh, forum we won't do a formal poll here 